Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes. It's week number four, which means we've passed the official halfway point of the regular season, which is, I mean, just so exciting. I'm TJ, and I'm joined by my constant co-host, Saddle. Saddle, how did you enjoy your official halfway point of the regular season for season two this past weekend? Honestly, it's <clears throat> news to me, TJ. I had no idea we'd crossed the halfway point of the season. If only there was someone who could have reminded me when this happened on multiple occasions every five minutes for the entirety of a whole broadcast. That would have been very useful this weekend, but unfortunately we didn't have that. So this was news to me. I've just found out. Just crossed the halfway line, huh? Fascinating stuff. Yeah, that just goes to show me that I need to mention it more <laughs> in week number five. That yeah. week number four, we passed the official halfway point but we did have last year a standing this past week which was pretty fun I, I think that we got to see a little bit more diversity than i was expecting honestly since uh, it had been a while since we saw balance changes but the first time on lhs but let's go ahead and jump into some hot takes and we can sprinkle in some last year standing conversations as we move along uh, we're gonna start with hot take number one for the week america's continues to be the region with the highest level of play. Hang on. And I put emphasis <laughs> on continues because we talked about this in last season and we both agreed that America's at some point in season one had the highest level of play. Did we? I feel like this is back to bait and switch TJ where you're trying to entrap me just with the mere nature of the question to accepting that before this point America's had the highest standard of play which is a bizarre premise to be kicking off with. But... Yeah, I do find this interesting to talk about because I think if you want to narrow it down and get very specific with it, like if you want to look at, say, the Sunday broadcasts, and um, perhaps we, America's has been up there with the the likes of uh, Monsanto and Luna getting through to finals, playing great finals, Dreadeye being in there as well, playing some lights out Hearthstone on the, the last day. Um, the top fours for Americas have tend to showcase some very, very good Hearthstone. Uh, this week, I know I was tweeting about it, you guys are talking about it as well, but we kind of got to saw a bit of a highlight more so on uh, Dmitry Kazov, who I think has been a great addition to the Americas region as well. But I think, honestly, like, we've still got to throw a little bit of America's lol in there, here and there, haven't we? Like, I can't believe we're standing up here and saying that America's the region where just about anyone can qualify for if they have a decent day in a Masters Tour is exhibiting the highest level of play because I would much rather refocus that on Europe on some of the qualifiers we've had with the tools that say Gabby has brought into Grandmasters uh, this season, what Floki has brought into Grandmasters this season, what newly promoted Bunny Hopper has brought into Grandmasters this season. <laughs> I would much, much rather give that title over to the European region. So I think we have kind of an opposites thing going on here. All right. Um, with, with Master Stores compared to Grandmasters, right? Okay. Europe, obviously, as a competitive region, as a whole, has the depth. It's obvious in you know their ability to consistently get high point totals in Masters tours, and you know the quality of player that actually get promoted to uh, to Grand Masters. Uh, but and here's the opposites thing. You, ca you catch my drift. I think that America's actually has the most depth within Grand Masters than any other region, and this is a Grand Masters focused show. Saddle. I don't know if you got the memo in the last three years that we've done this. Um, but I, I think that, yes, Europe has some absolute stars at the, at the top of their standings. But I feel like you can go down much deeper into the list of players in the America standings and like point to examples of you know, how good they are um, and how clean they've been playing this year. Yes, every region has had their blunders so far this season. It's mm -hmm. a very hard metagame. We've had, you know, question mark, question mark, question marks thrown into our, our Grandmasters talent chat nonstop in every region. Uh, but I just think that Americas has been showing some clean play from pretty deep down in in the, the roster. I mean, you mentioned Luna. Luna's pretty far down in the standings. Yeah. So uh, I, th I think that, you know, at least for now, Americas is, is pretty clean, pretty clean. Didn't we kind of agree on exactly the opposite a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about, like, is the best player in the world from Japan or whatever that topic was? And we Yeah, we, we did. 
we kind of agreed on the exact opposite that the the, the the depth of field in Grandmasters was still the biggest within Europe and that our players who were getting relegated would probably be making playoffs in the other regions. Didn't we talk about that, TJ? Or am I having short-term memory problems? Well, yes, but that was because, you know, we're, we're, it was a fresh season. You know, <laughs> I, I had, we had just come off a couple Masters tours since the last uh-huh. time I'd watched GM. I was really down on America's. But then for the first four weeks, uh, it's it's hard for me to point out like these glaring mistakes from a lot of players, <laughs> and, and even when they are making mistakes, it's a lot of times like these French case scenarios with like Garot Rogue or something like that, where you know they admit they go, oh I should have done this, I should have done this, I should have done this, but it's not like a a severe lack of understanding of gameplay and overall they've been clean. So I've changed my mind. I am on the America's hype train once again, and choo choo, Sala, we got a Masters tour coming up in a month and a half, and I'm excited for it. <laughs> The, the never ending roller coaster curve of America's hype for a Masters Tour. This is going to be the one. This is going to be our time. This is going to be the one where America's finally puts in a good performance. Oh, the entire top 16 oh, is no. European and Chinese <laughs> players again. Oh, no. How do I get out of this one? Yeah, I'm used to seeing it by now. Th- Here we are. This is going to be the Masters Tour where an America's player finally plays a 4 4. <laughs> Never. That's what I'm talking about. Never. If there's one uh, thing that is banned in America's Hearthstone, it's playing a 4-4. If Killin' All Day was allowed to play 4-4s, he would have won a world championship by now. That's just that <laughs> Yeah, he would have. All right. Well, I'm glad we can agree on this point. Uh, we can. <laughs> did we? At least for the most part, we can move on. <laughs> okay, yeah, we did. Sure. All right, fine. We did. Uh, for the sake of ease and for the sake of moving on to the next hot take, we'll just say that we agree. All right. Hot take number two for the week. No one knows... Literally anything about this metagame. It's maybe my favorite hot take ever. I mean, they, yeah, this is. I, I threw this one into the mix because I honestly kind of feel this way. And I was thinking about this this morning because if you look at the kind of cadence of, of nerfs and evaluations that have been posted recently by uh, Alec on Twitter, one of the developers, keeping us up to date on how things are being monitored, we're probably expecting some nerfs again soon. And I was just thinking, like. <laughs> This meta game keeps getting changed, and I don't think anyone's figured out anything about what's good because I was looking at some of the last hero standing lineups this time around. There was no real um, common thread through most of them. Lots of people had very, very different ideas. Um, we were yep. debating Conquest last week. I don't think anyone really knew what the best X strategy was, whether that was a good thing to do, whether a target lineup was better. But, you know, we still have, like, people bringing Brute Demon Hunter and winning tournaments with it, and then other people saying that that deck's completely unplayable. You have Monsanto and Language Hacker playing Aggro Druid because they felt like Brute Demon Hunter was a big enough threat where they needed that as a counter cue for it, and they were the only people bringing Aggro Druid, and some other people weren't bringing Brute Demon Hunter. The only thing that people seem to agree on right now, maybe this is where the take falls apart because it does say no one knows literally anything, I think the one thing that we all agree on is Garot Rogue's pretty good, right? Like, that's about as far as we've got with this metagame, but what your Warlock deck is supposed to be, whether you're supposed to be playing Mage, whether you're supposed to be playing Shaman, whether you're supposed to be playing Shadow Priest. Bank Yugi still thinks you're supposed to be playing Control Priest, apparently. Like, there's so much disagreement (laughs) in this meta game as to what's going on that I'm staggered that we're actually just going to shake this up again because I really don't feel, as far as the competitive scene is regarded, we've settled at all. I don't think anyone has figured out anything about optimal order, optimal order strategies for Last Hero Standing or Conquest. And now we're going to throw both of them up in the air again. It's ridiculous, TJ. And, and while, you know, the one thing that players may know that Garot Rogue is, you know, pretty good, it's not performing that well. It's not. Right? No. Like, yeah. it's, I mean, part of that's, you know, there's players that are missing opportunities here and there. <laughs> they're, not playing it, they're not playing it optimally, but... Uh, aside just, from that, it still just feels like it's losing games. Sorry, and I've, then just, another I've just realized how much better that makes the argument. is that The one thing that we all agree on is that the 45% <laughs> win rate deck is really good. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and and then, you know, so another thing that players can agree on is that Warlock's pretty good. Yeah. But, like, no one had the same list. So no one even knows which Warlock is the best. And I don't think players know even which warlock is the best even if you gave them a specific scenario and said all right pick which warlock deck you want they're like i don't know <laughs> like two two altars of fires <laughs> like um no nightshade matrons right like 
it's it's ridiculous. And then there's been decks popping up over the last couple days, right? Um, there's that weird Evolve Shaman that hit rank 1 on China. Yep. That I've actually been just beat by, like a turn 3 Deathwing on the board because a Knoll got evolved because the Meeting Stone that they played gave them two minions and gave them the hand size to be able to play Knoll and Evolve. And then there's a 12-12, I can't kill it, I died. And then there's also a lot of players having success with various forms of Paladin uh, on the top of uh, on top end of ladder. I don't know if you knew this, Paladin sweeping the nation. Um, many nations, actually. I don't know why I said that. So, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about this metagame. I just <laughs> play whatever beat me in my last game on ladder, and I'm like, that looks cool, I'm going to play that. And I end up just playing ten different decks, and so... Which means... It's crazy. TJ has never played a single deck for more than one game in a row. Um, yeah, I mean, I completely agree, obviously, because I kicked this whole thing off, but it's been a weird old season to cast as well, because usually there's like threads that you can build on as a commentator from one week to next about trends in decks and how things are evolving, but it's felt like, because of the rotating format first and foremost, because of the break for the Masters Tour, and because it just seems like we have a new balance patch every single week, it's really been hard to like get a handle on things as a commentator to, to find things to talk about, let alone the position the players are in where they have to be testing matchups and submitting lineups and doing all that good stuff over and over again so i think this is probably one of the most difficult seasons of grandmasters to play in for that reason for for many reasons honestly because as you mentioned in the previous take it's a super hard meta game to play at the best of times even if you don't have to worry about which deck yeah. you want to play um when you factor in lineup construction and a very unsettled meta game into that as well i think it gets harder and harder and Hats off to all the players doing well this season because I think it's been an incredibly difficult one to navigate. Yeah, and uh, thus makes it an incredibly difficult one to cast as well. So, um, yeah, it's been challenging. But at the same time, because of all these these challenges, it's been fun. Because, you know, at the end of the, the last set, we had a metagame that lasted, what, a month month and a half? Where yeah. it was Rush Warrior, Miracle Rogue, Control Priest for a very long time. And yeah. just the fact that we, I feel like every player knew exactly everything about the metagame back then. To go to the complete opposite, again, it's an opposites thing kind of day. Uh, where we don't know anything, it makes it refreshing. And that challenge is fun for me. And I hope that it's fun for you too, Subtle. <laughs> You know me, TJ. I'll always rise to the challenge. Yeah, I mean, here we are again, right? We get towards the end of an episode of Hot Takes and we're back to just talking about how we really like this meta game and don't <laughs> want it to go away. It happens every single episode. It doesn't matter how much we yeah. try to avoid it. We do just both genuinely really like the game right now. So that's what it comes back to every single time. Yeah. And somehow people yeah. manage to take offense to our positivity. Just let people enjoy things. That's, that's all it takes. Just leave us alone. And and in a sense, <laughs> that's the hot take all along. <laughs> uh, one running hot take for the whole season. Yep. We'll see if we can keep it up, but Saddle, we are out of time. We were actually out of time a couple minutes ago, but, you know, um, we got to talk. So uh, we're out of time. So thank you, everyone out there, for tuning in to week four of Hot Takes. We're coming back next week, going back to Conquest, and who knows what's going to happen. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for more Hot Takes.